Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. Today we're talking about connecting FileMaker to AI, also known as artificial intelligence with search. So why do we need this? Why is this important? Well, if you think about connecting FileMaker to AI, what you normally have is a provider providing a model, an AI model. And these models are trained within a given time period. And often they can be months or even years out of date, meaning their training data does only go so far. And it doesn't include current events. It doesn't know today's weather. doesn't know who won the baseball game last night. doesn't know any of that because it's only been trained up to a certain date. So what we do as developers is we introduce the idea of the model's ability to search the internet to gather the information, curate it, and bring it back. So now we have a really smart model that understands logic and has a wide variety of trained data, but can also supplement that trained data with today's data on the internet by way of search. And that's what we're talking about here. So in the demonstration coming up, I'll be showing you how FileMaker can look at the internet and use that as part of its answer when the questions are asked. So in this particular use case, we are looking at an email address or a website or domain, and we want AI to go research the information behind that and bring back a bunch of relevant information about a given company or organization. And the only way it can do that properly is by way of search, especially if you're asking for what's the latest and greatest news about this company. There's no way you could do that without also incorporating search. So that's what this demo is all about, and I'll show you how we do that here in FileMaker. You can find this downloadable file, which is completely free and unlocked for your use at Productive Computing University in a course called FileMaker Features and Free Resources. Okay, we start with the downloadable file, AI Internet Search. You'll want to be sure to put in your OpenAI API key here, if you haven't already done so. Once you enter that, the demo will be operational. What this demo allows you to do is put in an email, a website, a domain name. It'll do a search on that based on your prompt and fill in the necessary fields here using structured data, meaning we are asking the model to return our responses in JSON with fields that we tell it to go research. So let me give you an example. I'll choose a person at Microsoft. This is just a random person, not a real email necessarily. I'll click on AI search and it'll go out and based on that, answer the prompt, return JSON, and then I parse the JSON here into the demo file. Okay, so we've acquired the name, the summary of a little bit about the company, the industry, information technology, number of employees, headquarters. The latest news, and this is in the form of an array or multiple records here put in a portal, and then the top five competitors and up to 10 products listed that they provide or services. So that's it. It goes out and does that research. The real magic in this is not so much in the construct on how you get FileMaker to talk to AI, but in the prompt that you use so that you can get this exact information you're looking for each and every time or close to. So let me show you another one. Let's do Netflix, and we'll go out and do that. It says the data already exists for this record, so let me go back and put this to, I'll put that back and then create a new record, Command N, and this time we'll do the Netflix one. There we go. I built in some validation and error trapping so that you wouldn't overwrite your data without prompting. Okay, so there's Netflix, same sort of thing, but consistent results, just a different company. Now I can do this and just put in, let's say, abc.com, and that will also work because it doesn't have to be an email address. It's really just looking for a domain. But we say such in the prompt, in the actual instructions. We talk about if there's no at symbol, then just take it and assume it's a domain. There it is, American Broadcasting Company. Now, if it doesn't know something or isn't sure, um, it'll put the word undetermined here. And because this is a number field, you don't see the word undetermined show up until you click in it. So that's a little 
nuance there. I probably should figure out a better way to do that. Maybe put the employees as a text field instead of a number field. That way you have the word undetermined show up. Or you might say to yourself, well, I want to add up the employees or use that in a calculation somewhere along the way. So you would want to keep it as a number. But that's now we're getting into nuanced FileMaker programming. Okay, let's look under the hood to see how all this works. I'll go into script workspace and you want to target perform internet search. That's the name of the script that does all of this. And let's just walk through it. We have set error capture on, allow user abort on. You technically would want to have allow user abort off in a production environment. Then I commit the records. That way, if they entered any data, we are sure to commit it before we do anything more. Then we have just a little bit of code here to do what's called a pre-flight check. Sometimes I name this validation. Let's take a quick look at this. It's worth mentioning here. I'll look at the details. It's really just a case statement that has four conditions or five conditions. First, we want to ensure that the company is empty and the news is also empty for this. And if so, if there's something already there, we warn the user data already exists for this record, clear fields, or create a new record. If there's nothing in the found set, we say no records to populate. If we're missing an email for the search, we say so. If we're missing the API key, we mention that as well. And then if it's none of those things, we have no error, so we return blank. So this one calc both determines the condition that we want to check for and provides a response that we capture inside of this message variable, MSG. Then it's simple. We simply say, if there's a message to be displayed, show that message, and then exit the script. So this little bit of code here does all of that checking for us, and it keeps it into a tight, organized package there. Once we validate the record, we can configure the AI account. This is done in the normal way, where we decide an account name. I'm using OpenAI as the account name. This could be anything you want. This could be the number one. This could be your name. This could be an ID of some sort. You want to use a name where you can identify this configuration and then reference it later when we call the script step generate response from model here. This configure AI account needs to be called at least once per session ahead of calling the other FileMaker related script steps, but it doesn't have to be called every time the way you see it here. I'm doing that just because I want to have one script that does it all for this demo. Then we choose the AI provider. You can pick whichever provider you're going with or custom. Then we have the API key itself, which I'm pulling directly from that field that you saw at the top right of the demo. So that's the configuration, pretty straightforward there. Then the script that does all the magic is here called generate response from model. And I'm referencing the OpenAI name just as we defined it here in the previous script step. And then we choose this model, which as of this recording still works, but by the time you watch this, this model may change. It may, they may have dropped the word preview. They may have added to it. They may have removed it altogether. It's hard to say what they're going to do or how they're going to incorporate it. But this is an open AI model dedicated with the ability to do a search. So that's what I'm calling here, GPT-40 search. That's in the form of a calculation too, so you needed that to be conditionalized, you could do that. Then the prompt. So here the prompt is straightforward. Extract the domain from this email address. And then we say, that's the email address. So that's the one thing that we feed it in the prompt, at least in this section. And then the rest of this, I'll locate here under the gear icon. We are running agentic mode. It may not be needed for the way we're doing this script step because we're not really calling tools per se, but I leave it there just in case. It seems to work a little better with agentic mode, but I haven't done a lot of rigorous scientific testing on that. We do need to store the response after the AI returns something. We need to know where to put that. So here I'm putting it into a global variable called dollar dollar results. And the reason we're storing it in a variable rather than a field is because we're not quite done with it. Just because we get it back, we're going to be parsing it. So I don't really want to store it in FileMaker. I just want to store it, in a sense, temporarily inside this global field so we can parse it. And then finally, the parameters here is actually it's checked, but there's nothing specified. So that would be 
a redundant checkbox. We don't need that. So that's it. Agentic mode, the response going into the global variable, and then the instructions. This is very important. This is where all the nitty gritty details come through and we're telling the model exactly how to behave and what to do. So I think it's worth reading through this a little bit because without these instructions written in this way, your results will definitely vary. Now, they don't have to be exactly the way they're written here, but this is a good starting point. In fact, if you were to take this series of prompt instructions, copy it to ChatGPT, paste it in there and say, refine this prompt to make it a little bit more succinct, a little bit more detailed, or a little bit more effective, it might be able to word this in such a way that's even better than what I've done here. What I've done here, for the most part, just comes out of my own imagination, if you will, and some experimentation. So this has been tweaked a bit with various tests. So let me read through this now. Response should be JSON text only, no tick marks, no introduction or conclusion. What's a tick mark? A tick mark is pretty common in the world of AI that they'll put the JSON formatted text inside of tick marks like this to distinguish where the JSON begins versus the plain text. And we're saying we don't want any plain text. We want just the JSON so we don't have to parse out the JSON from within a text intro or text conclusion. Then the instructions themselves, perform a search and return strict and valid structured data as JSON with the following field names. So it's really important that we define the field names, otherwise we won't get our data back in a structured way. So the names are name, company, underscore summary, industry, employee count, top five competitors, and then I put in parentheses, as an array, which means there could be more than one, and we want it to be formatted as a JSON array. Then headquarters, product services, an array, list up to 10, which means 10 related products or 10 products and services that the company may do. And then summarize the latest, and I put that in all caps to really emphasize that we want new news, not old news, thereby proving that it had to do a search to get that new news because the news is newer than the model was trained for or trained through. So if this model was only trained through January 2025, here we are in October of 2025, if I get a news story after January 2025, that proves that it had to go to do a search to get that news. And that's why I'm including this specific example, uh, because we are talking about internet search, and it's nice to prove that. Then I say list at least three, but not more than three, and that's referring to news stories, as JSON key top news. So we want that to be returned as top news with fields for title, summary, and date. And then I even specify the date. It's really important that you tell AI models the date because they don't default to the FileMaker friendly date. They default to other dates most often. So I always put MMDD YYYY with slashes between because that's exactly how we want to get that back. Then I put two returns here kind of distinguishing a separation between the phrase of instructions versus the step-by-step. -step. So number one, parse the email and extract the domain after the at symbol, if present. Treat common free mail domains like Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook, etc., as no company found. In other words, it's hard to research a company if you put outlook.com because that's typically a personal address or yahoo.com or icloud.com. There's no company behind that, so you can't identify what the company is. So we're saying ignore those and say no company found and return null. Number two, normalize the domain. Strip subdomains like mail or info if they obviously aren't the corporate site. Number three, identify the company associated with the domain by visiting the root website and corroborating with reputable sources. Number four, use search to gather recent information the last 12 months when possible. Number five, produce the JSON output exactly matching the schema. Do not include extra properties. In other words, don't embellish the JSON. Give it to me just the way I defined it. And then number six, don't use commas or punctuation in any of the numbers returned. Sometimes it likes to get fancy and format the numbers for us, but we don't want commas in our numbers. We want pure numbers because FileMaker will take care of any comma formatting that we want to do later on. Then the top news requirements, prefer official newsroom pages and high quality publications, no paywall summaries or speculative rumors. I believe I got that particular quote from AI, 
in while well, helping having it help me with aspects of this prompt. Then competitors up to five peer companies operating in similar markets, if unclear, return undetermined, which we saw happen on one of those fields for employees. Uh, products and services up to 10 concise items, mix of products, platforms, or services. So that's it. So it's really the magic of this is more in the prompt than it is in the actual construct, because without a good prompt, you're going to get interesting or results that you can't work with. Okay, so assuming we've got our response now, we can parse the fields, and that is straightforward parsing at this point. We're just populating the names and we're using the function JSON get element, and we just pull the names exactly how we originally defined them name, company summary, industry, employee count, and so forth. Then we parse the news. So everything from here through here is just a way to identify the number of records we have and then create a loop and an environment where we can set the portal row and set the portal information and loop through until it reaches its total. And that's what all of this is here. That's straightforward FileMaker work by parsing JSON. Now, if you need additional help with JSON parsing, we have a free course for that. Let's do one more, but this one will make international. So I'll come here and we'll go to, oh, let's go to Ferrari.it and see what this is all about. Okay, so this is definitely in the automotive space and we have some recent news articles here. These are all in October and today happens to be the 9th. So it's it's picking really the latest, greatest news releases from Ferrari, along with their competitors and products and services. Now, keep in mind that each time you do one of these searches, there is a small fee being incurred. Now, that fee will depend on the provider you're using. In this case, we're using OpenAI. So you want to be sure to look at the models, check out the pricing, and determine how it is being billed to you, or keep an eye on your usage in the OpenAI dashboard to see what that entails. Now, if you were to incorporate this for a customer or a user, chances are they don't necessarily want to do 500 records a day on research. So maybe they have a backlog of things they need researched so you can calculate the price based on how much, they, how much the provider charges you per search or based on tokens, depending on what it is. So just plan accordingly. But generally speaking, if we were to incorporate this in a company, you can figure that this would be used for the same amount of records that they might create leads for on a given day. Then you can extrapolate that and say, well, how many leads do we create a month that we might use this research tool? And then just figure out the price. And generally speaking, it's very affordable. I mean, you probably, depending on the size of the company and how many leads they actually get, if you're doing it based on leads, uh, you're talking probably less than a dollar a month to to pay for this most likely it would be unless it's in the thousands of records so there it is that's internet search through filemaker this model was open ai if you were to use other models they work a little differently in most cases a lot of models don't have search tools so internet search here is easy and it works with the filemaker tools because the model itself is a search based model but most of the time the models that you use, such as Gemini or other models from OpenAI, where search can be incorporated in your query, it has to be done by way of the tools area. So in other words, you have to specify a tool to have it do the search as part of the prompt and part of the response. And in those cases, you may have varying degrees of success or failure based on how it's constructed, because when you're talking about the way FileMaker incorporates these latest script steps, it requires them to be OpenAI compatible. And if you're going to use a tool, it may only work under certain conditions. So why this works so easily and so well is because, again, we are using a model that was purpose built to be a search first model. That's why they call it search preview. But other models that don't necessarily specify in search can do search, but you have to call them a certain way. And in those cases, if you can't use the latest, greatest FileMaker script steps, you can certainly use insert from URL, look at the documentation, and then build accordingly. You can find this downloadable file, which is completely free and unlocked for your use at Productive Computing University in a course called FileMaker Features and Free Resources.